go to our next speaker he is the last but not the least welcome doc, uh, dr professor yasser ahmed reda he is presently working as a senior consultant in anesthesia and chronic pain management department of hamad medical corporation qatar he is the head of interventional pain medicine in psu in, in the same institute he is the head of block room of regional anesthesia and intervention pain and also the course director of ultrasound guided regional anesthesia and pain intervention he did his anesthesia and chronic pain management training at the national cancer institute under cairo university egypt and awarded as doctor of anesthesia and pain management he has lot of degree and certificate in, in her repertoire like arab board of anesthesia and intensive care medicine european diploma in anesthesia european diploma in regional anesthesia and acute pain and european diploma in pain medicine and so on and he is also has an ozone diploma in ozone therapy and american board of headache by usa he has published lot of paper in national and international journal and is also guiding as an editor for different pain books he has been invited as a speaker and faculty in many local regional and international conferences and workshops specifically in his area of interest like regional anesthesia chronic pain and difficult airway workshop i like to welcome dr ray and dr reda and for his talk on thoracic uh, thoracic blocks from anatomy to sonoanatomy and thank you uh, for uh, to be one of the member today um, i'm happy because i'm a member all the time from this team but today is different because i'm on call already and uh, i borrow internet from from one of my friend resident friend uh, so uh, you hear me You have any problem? No, no. that's fine, Doctor Yasser. That's fine. Thank it's you. okay. No. So uh, uh, I, this is my beautiful city. I show every every presentation because I like it, and this is a history of my childhood. And um, this is a, I, I feel it. Um, this is the bottom of my heart all the time. I don't have any conflict of interest about this presentation. And my objective in this presentation, uh, I know that the two presentation before me is very heavy, like a heavy meal. So I may, I will try to make it as a dessert or, or something funny at the end because it is a late time for us to, to, to give and to go in, in deeper for the uh, presentation. So I just will, will at this presentation, I will speak about brief anatomy of the system wall. So no anatomy and some blocks of the system wall, because at the heavy meal, I can't discuss everything in this presentation. And some block used for chest wall and other pain. And the block is not a taxes free complication all the time. So ultrasonography guided wall block, many and many, and every day you can add more block. And even they have an, a problem now of to, how to name the, this block. So we have many blocks for this world, like neuroaxial, interbrural, parasternal, anterior axial line block, sobra scapular nerve block, intercostal nerve block, other nerve block. Paravertebral will speak about and focus. And erectospiny blame block, I have another presentation, so I will just go fast. And Bix1 and Bix2, and Cerecious and uh, blame block. And there is, there is many, many blocks, but I will focus in this block. Because we're given a unique, uh, unique surface for the patient, and we need to make an optimal, and we deal with uh, people don't care about that to fix the bone. He don't care about any pain, and our role now extended just so, not from preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative, and we care even about the recovery of the patient when we need to recover, it. and the most important to us is that the patient came recover from anesthesia and at the same time don't have a pain. It is not an, a hero to be a hero just to give a patient sleepy and not recover and don't have a pain. We need a patient recover without pain. And now we have many options, not like before. I think as old people when they started their careers don't have many options, but now we have many options. We make our uh, uh, anesthesia or, or analgesia in an optimal way. And because anesthesia or analgesia is not one fit all, we have many options. But now I will speak about Sonography. All time I will have ultrasonography because 
it, it is an, a very good tool like a glasses when you see by your eyes. To see the structure, diagnose variation and abnormality, less volume, not like before 35 or 40, uh, inter, when you give interscalene, it's very horrible volume and we use it. And in some study, less complication and the standard of care and decrease cancer recurrence and more comfort for the patient, give both of us analgesia. So, and in easy word, he give, he give you, can you see what, what, what behind the door without opening and what inside the airs without digging. So why original? This is why an ultrasound, why original? This is stress response, less tumor recurrence after mastectomy. Better, this is a study showing that better glucose control, less opioid and less side effect of opioid and the drug seeking behavior, less bleeding, hemodynamic stability, less post-operative pain and persistent post-operative pain, less opioid and drug seeking behavior. And you are lucky if you have a, a, an anesthesia, which can be done by original anesthesia. So anatomical variation, this is found everywhere, you know, not all the people like the same and not all the nerves are the same, and not all the distribution like the same. So you must know a little about, uh, about innervation. And you must know that the anatomy is totally different from the anatomy. So this is my picture in anatomy. For example, when I just said, uh, uh, sorry. This is my picture anatomy. You see, this is my picture anatomy. And this is my picture in suno anatomy. So you don't, you can't, you can't know me in suno anatomy if you don't see and know my picture in anatomy. This is the difference between the two. This is the negative film of the structure. And the most important visual anesthesia is the target to put you, your needle in a target way. And you need a training all the time. I put this in every presentation because it's very important and to manipulate your, your, your uh, uh, machine like a bar technique, pressure alignment, rotation, uh, tilting and sliding, and to predict the risk. This is not a Texas free risk because you bleed with a shark when you make a regional anesthesia, especially if you're not trained. And com some complication can kill, and no one away from the complication. Don't think that you are a professional. If you don't follow the guideline, you will bolt on trouble, get on trouble. And you must discriminate. Some patients don't need you. For example, post-operative cardiac problem, post-operative uh, what's called a complication away from original anesthesia. So you need just to send the patient to emergency. I know, I know that you are confused now about it. But uh, what is the most most important reason to prevent the post-operative pain management? Post-operative pain. This is a, can you see? This is, don't do operation, but this is the answer. Anatomy of the back of the muscle. You know, this is a picture of uh, uh, Mauricio Ferrero by himself. This would uh, create or just start the erectospinal blade block. So the anatomy of the back, uh, the most important uh, erectospinal muscle, and you can see by my arrow, it is not one muscle, it is a group of muscle in lumbar area three. It may be in thoracic three or four, and that one, it will be one or two above the sacral. And when it started, it started for thoracic area. But it can now for more study, more two, more one two thousand study, in this five years about erectile spinal blade block everywhere from cervical, lumbar, thoracic, sacral, and can use for, for big array for an anesthesia or analgesia. So this is a three muscle. The character of erectile spine is a muscle attached to spinous process, a transverse process, and erected the spine. So it's called the erectile spine. And this is muscle is included in included in, in uh, soracolumbar fascia, which is fenestrated from anterior. And the, uh, again, there is another place it's called the paravertebral space. When you go between transverse process here and jet your medication during the, the nerves coming from the foramen to supply a different area. You know this this another one. There is an if you if you follow the nerve here. You can find the called quadrilateral lumbar muscle because the nerve bypass here. The nerve came in lumbar area here and so on. Penetrate the source from medial to lateral and come to anterior, anterior to the uh, uh, quadrilateral lumbar. And the nerve bus here between two layers, uh, uh, what's called uh, the, the external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis. So you can block it here until just the nerve end here. In rectus abdominis muscle, give a branch medial lateral and this is by lateral innervation. So you can't block in all this area for thoracic. But in thoracic area, if you go up, you can find minimum mini muscle like 
like big big smears or big minor serious anterior muscle and they, all the brain just it can reach to each other according to the volume and this is depend on also on the muscle contraction and the facial dynamics because the the study in cadaver not showing guys what happened in reality and this is the one about the muscle so the thoracic paravertebral block <clears throat> this is a somatic and sympathetic block because if you see here you see the anterior primary ribeye here coming to make a sympathetic chain when shifting medication here, and medially you can find the frame in the disc and vertebra. Uh, you know that anterior you can find the uh, 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 what's called pleura and posterior supercus transverse ligament, and this is a nerve roll. So if you isolate your medication in this area, you can block all the nerve here and even distribute it to a specific chain. And some studies show that entering the uh, medial space and make a medial, even in some areas, can go to the other side. And uh, uh, this is give usually uh, from T2 to T10, if you make it, according to the injection and the place. And uh, usually it come it going up about, for the study, from, from five to nine segment and lower from one to five segment. Uh, and this is a small area, triangular area. You can inject here or the vertebral and frame. It. But remember here, <clears throat> the nerve is very near to your needle. And if you go transverse technique, you can enter to injure the spinal cord. And this is a, there is a case report about that. And the radicular artery came from this area. And many, I think I, I read a case report about paraplegia of, after injection here. And also this area full of vessels and the absorption is very high, comparable to uh, intercostal. And if you compare this one to electrospiny, you found this one like a spinal, working fast, working deep, but erectus uh, uh, spine like an epidural, a little working late, but can stay forever. And this is another picture to show the here, and this is an injection in this area from posterior to anterior, and how to make it, and how can you see it? You know, in previous technique, one just make a landmark technique, just going about to one inch lateral and with transversus and going blue or up above the transversus, one centimeter injected. And some people lose loss of resistance, but not like an epidural. But here, if you look by ultrasound, it's called a very fantastic picture. This is called Neptune Trident sign, like a, a frog of Neptune. And here you can see the transversal system. This is the transversible step, and this is a pleura, and this is a second of supercus transversal ligament. And if you go parasagital uh, uh, longitudinal technique, you can inject it here. But he, here you have a problem because you can't even see the needle in a good angle, and you can't see the needle. And sometimes you can inject inside the, the pleura. So there is another technique, what's called transversal technique. But the transversal technique, and this is, sorry, this is Neptune. This is Neptune. Transverse technique. Maybe a good technique when you see the blower like this, but take care. The transverse technique, you can enter inside the foramen and go inside the spinal cord to make an injury. I think the best technique, it may be an oblique technique. The oblique technique, is because if you lost the tip of the needle, you hit the transverse process. And this is a blower and superior course transverse ligament, and here you're injected, injected. Here, your injection. And the fluid just most of the time going even lateral to go intercostal space. So this is paravertebral space, so pericostal transversal ligament, pleura, and this is the target for injection. And this is a transversal step. Again, so pericostal transversal ligament, and this is a paravertebral technique by different view. And this is an oblique view. You can see the uh, uh, triangular space. You know, here a very clear picture from a skinny person, this is a pericostal transversal ligament, this is a pleura, and you can isolate the volume here. And sometimes you tell me this is like an, an, an uh, intercostal blaze. Yes, this looks like intercostal. There is a paravertebral technique by just go to a lateral technique. And here you see the external intercostal, internal intercostal, and inter most intercostal. And this is a target for your injection. And here is a rib rib, and there is a target for your injection all the time. And really, we don't see this good picture in reality like we see here in pictures. Because even as a boy here, and this is a very good picture, so we have to ligament and here for injection. Uh, there is many other block. You know, if you go above, above here, above the transverse muscles, and injected here between the erector spiny muscle, transverse, this fluid just going up and down and 
And just at the end, going to the bar vertebral space in a very smooth way to be the same block, but it takes a time, like epidural. Some people just go, this is epidural space. And some people just go to be a mid, mid transverse block here to inject it. Work. But this needs more evaluation, more study, because really this is a closed space, not like this space or this space, this is a longitudinal space. And here you've got trapezius from point rectus spiny. And if you inject it above the rectus spiny, at the end, he has the fluid coming down until the upper vertebral space. This is how to that many other muscle in the neck, uh, just what's called resembling or acting like an uh, erectus spine. So the erectus spine is just a, going a little lateral, a lateral, and it's done by Marasio Ferrero. And he don't he tell me that he, I don't know that he can this noise all over the world and become one of the uh, most important study topics now for blocks, and there is many, many muscle, but in, in the thoracic area, iliocostalis, uh, longismus, and spinalis. And uh, this is included in the thoracic lumbar fascia, and there is a fenestration anterior. If you ingest in this fascia, this fluid found the right anterior to go to the nerve roots and to go to the epidural space. And this is proven by a cadaver study and a clinical study. And as I told you, this is the same like paravertebral, but very small and many study. And I remember a very important study done in Turkey. They said after eight hours, in comparison to paravertebral, the paravertebral need a very big amount of narcotics, as this can stay for a long time. Here, here if you go for the block, to go for just paraspinal, bara just paraspinal to see the lamina, lamina like horse head or like so tooth here. And if, if you go a little lateral, you found the transverse process. Your injection must be in the tip of transverse process rib complex here in this area. You can inject in the middle, but to be more effective, you must inject on the tip. How you know the tip? Just to go from medial lateral, lateral medial until you see the, the differentiation between the rib and transverse process. And you see the rib, just when you see the transverse process is the this is a tip, or just to do oblique view, you can see the tip of transverse process, and this technique is done here by my art colleague. This is Marasio Ferrero, in which you make an uh, erector spiny, and they uh, make it by chance because injected for a cancer patient. I have uh, bilateral, uh, sorry, I have uh, metastasis on the rib, and not relieved by any medication. When injected, he got uh, to, uh, 48 hour analgesia. And he, after two hours, three hours, ask the radiology people to see where is the fluid gone. It was above the erector spine, not below. And they tried to make it many times after that, it's not working. And uh, uh, later, he make it posterior, as here. You see transverse rib complex, according to the level. Transverse, yes, from erector spine, and to inject it here. But sometimes the trick here, if you inject it, sometimes you inject it in the muscle or in the bereosium. In bereosium, it's very high, high resistant, and in muscle, it's the muscle. So you need the slip, the needle anterior or posterior to inject in the right blade. And you see your fluid coming up and down. This is what's called oblique transverse process. This is the rep. And this is what we inject in the pain management about costal transverse joint. Here, if you inject it above the tip, this is a tip transverse process in this area. You inject the rectus spiny. You can rotate the, the, uh, the, your probe after that to see the distribution up and down. And also here, this is this area transverse process, it's about a vertebral space. If you slip the air, it can go for paravertebral bar space. I have some of my colleagues now try to make it the two, like combined spinal epidural. So injected some here and some medication in the paravertebral space to so working fast, but this needs more evaluation. And this is a big chart to show the distribution of the fluids down. Really, it is of the procedure which is one fit all, can work for all things. And why this block is novel? Use a big array for acute and chronic pain. Use different type of surgery, neck, shoulder, abdomen, pelvis, lower limb, and even genital uh, surgery. Easy block protected by bone because the bone is your friend. Uh, low profile side effect, a raw material for research, open the gate for other, other facial block. The other block here, after that, it will be an BIX1 and BIX2. BIX1, just to block the medial and lateral vector. I found some of you telling me this is not a uh, given not nervous distribution, given sensory distribution. Yes, we know that, but we know that the fascia have an, an heavy innervation and the muscle have an heavy innervation. And if you don't block it, it can make a less and less comfort for the patient. So you, if you make it for plastic surgery, when you do uh, uh, the stripping of the muscle, you need a good analgesia for that. So 
the 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 big one be working for lateral and medial pectoral nerve will supply the uh, part of the axilla and shoulder and uh, the breast and the very very beneficial breast and this is a medial lateral pectoral another another nerve here you can see thoracic dorsal and also along the thoracic nerve and some intercostal nerve just going in this blade and if you make this what's called uh, uh, this block block and it can make an analgesia for the muscle and sometimes for the skin of this area. And I will show this area. So the next one is between pectoralis major and main minor to inject uh, your medication around 10, 10 mil. There is many different doses, but 10 mil most of the study. And this block medial and lateral pectoral decrease the discomfort. And if you inject it between uh, pectoralis uh, minor and serratus, it is big too. Some people just, just you know, inject it even on the rib and in this area because there is many blocks. And most of the time, if comparable, it can work for the two, you know. And uh, a big one, I told you, using sub-muscular implant or tissue expander like a uh, Bortacast or a beast maker, surgery for big muscle, uh, minimally invasive uh, TCT surgery. <clears throat> Next two, just going a little more deeper and going to block uh, the lateral uh, vector, lateral nerve from the intercostal and they usually is going according to the volume from T2 to, 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 to uh, 6 if you give around uh, 20 ml in this area. But remember, this is not cover the anterior intercostal nerve which supplies the midline because this is only cover the lateral area. And here you can see if you see the muscle, the vector is major and minor. You can inject it here. And there is a very important artery here is descending branch of the femoral artery as a guide for you. Here, if you inject it in this area above the rib, it can, what's called big two, but some people just go and down from T3, T4, or five, just to, to see the, uh, uh, what's called the, uh, the other muscle to inject it around. But mostly if you inject it the same blade at T3 or T4, it will work. And this is the, how to inject it. Some people just go for the bone. Bone at the time is a very helpful to inject it here for big stool. Here, here also you see the uh, rib four. And you must remember that first rib you see is rib two. And this is looks like infraclavicular, but looking in, inside the chest. And going down and first rib you see near the axillary is rib two and three and four. Just a, usually three and four is, is a very good side to inject, but looking usually for the uh, in big one, so descending branch of thoracic artery, because if you inject around, you need a little, very little volume. Another block is the serratus anterior block. And this usually block the intercostal nerve because the bleeding going behind this muscle and the longus thoracic, uh, uh, what's called dorsal subscapular nerve. You can tell me this is not a sensory nerve for the skin, but intercostal is a sensory nerve for the skin. Just this is a latissimus uh, dorsi, a very big muscle. You go, uh, barrel to the navel and go on the posterior until you see the bulk of muscle. And this is a nerve and you can, sorry, and this is a, a big uh, cells and cure. And this is a plane, you inject it a plane. And this is a different, to inject above the muscle, blow the muscle. There is more study to show that above the muscle, like blow the muscle. We need more evaluation for that, but the two muscle is working. And here is block more, more and more nerve. If you give more block, if you give a very, very high, uh, uh, volume like 75, you can block all this area. But remember also this not below the middle line. It can take from C, C2 until C10, according, uh, sorry, C, C2, C2, sorry, T2 until C10 according to the volume, you can increase more than this. And also this is used for uh, breast surgery or posterior surgery, fracture rib, and this is a picture to show that this was of size, serratus anterior, to inject it above or below the same about uh, 20, 25 mil. And uh, this is the area which is supplied by the serratus anterior blade block and uh, blocking the lateral uh, cutaneous nerve. And uh, uh, also on the postural can be blocked because from C2, long thoracic nerve, thoracodorsal nerve. And how to make it? Just look for the navel and to go just uh, like the navel posterior until you see the, the latissimus dorsi. You can inject it here between the two muscles, and this is more safer, or just to inject it here or here, five, six on the rib, it can work the same. 
is just in play. And here also to show here, this is kind of injected above or down. This is a big chart to show you the cross major and minor, big one, big two. And if you go for solids and you can inject it here, CD or four, or can inject it here above the red. This is not over really because the time is, uh, is heavy. But uh, you know, this is my, 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 my quick conclusion for all the time working people working in erosion analysis. So before you, you, you touch the needle and to go for ultrasound, you must know the anatomy. Because anatomy is not finished in first year and second year for medical score. Anatomy is very important. And not just anatomy, the variation of anatomy, because there is many study now about every structure, how much is, is, uh, is variant in this structure. And to know so, so no anatomy, how to see this anatomy by ultrasound, because it's totally different from a, a real picture of anatomy. And to know the indication and the contraindication of everything. And to know a valuable knowledge about physics of ultrasound. You can't use any machine or any car if you can't drive it. And you must know everything about injected drug, the maximum dose, the character of the drugs, and the concentration for the drug for its block. And to know the neurology to make, to make the machine working in optimal way. And to optimize your machine target and the scout look before the area because you, you can't cancel the block if you found abnormality or just uh, any, any, anything to block in your block. Uh, and to use the second plan, whatever general original, the most important to master your technique and to rule of the doubler aluritic structure and complete sitting and safe place because this is an operation. This is a not easy thing, it can kill. And if you are not proficient, you can kill. So you need a complete sitting and safe place and safe sterilization and preparation ready for the complication to discover and to treat because some people can't discover the, 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 uh, the complication, so you can't treat. And no one can motivate you until you motivate yourself. And thank you very much for your uh, attendance and for your time. Thank you. And for any questions. I'd like to thank uh, special and Dr. Yassir has put a special thanks for starting the session in such a lighter note and ending it also in a very lighter note. This is a very difficult topic. And to put it in a concise map uh, within a time frame is very difficult. We have one question regarding that. What will be your, the trick of oblique thoracic paravertebral block approach? So it is from Dr. Fatma. Yeah, you know, that we have three, we have three techniques. Three technique. Parasagittal longitudinal. And you go from up and from, from down, no problem. But the problem is that the transverse process like this, you can't manipulate your needle in a good way. So you can't make a good angle. So an easy way, you can puncture the pleura and you can see your needle. If the patient is heavy like me, for example. So the second technique to go transverse technique, but transverse technique, you go like this, you see my hand, and this is a nerve root. So you can enter inside the framing and you don't see the tip of the needle and, can, and there is many cases report about injury. So we make a technique and the, this technique created from pain management because the rib like this and transverse process like this. And you inject the cost to transverse joint, usually if you have a pain. So, Above this, this transverse process, this is uh, what's called the table of transverse process. But for, for, for Dr. Fatma, you need, if you make your, your technique and oblique like this, you see, you see what happened? So if I, I lost the needle, it would help the transverse process. If even from up, down, and down, I will hit the transverse process. So the only problem for that is the long distance. It may be painful, more, more, more than the other technique. But you can manipulate your needle in a good way and you can avoid just to puncture or to go this area, which is very dangerous about vessels, nerves, and uh, arteries. You know, as I told you, there is a case report about uh, injury of artery atom the quick and get a vision paraplegia. And the many case report about uh, spinal cord injury from paraplegia. It created by ultrasound in 2010, but it regressed again after discovering of erectus vinae in blood. Great. I just want to re-emphasize one of your points that even if you know the sonar anatomy, before that you have to know the anatomy because then only yes. you know what you can expect just below your ultrasound probe. Otherwise, it's yes. very difficult to interpret all those structures which is just come in a white, black or gray scale. Yes. So if there is, and I will think that this is a topic or, which needs a hands-on training, at least in your unit or do some workshop. It is very difficult to get a grasp on yes. a webinar form or a didactic lecture. So yeah. once the COVID era is over, I think Sir will arrange, Dr. Asir will arrange a hands-on workshop for all other trainings so that they can learn it better. 
in a much, in a much more uh, practical way. Yes, yes. This is one of the the stuff which you need and practice. And I make and this workshop, as you said, uh, uh, Prof. I make it in Egypt, and I think Dr. Fatma, one of the attendants. But uh, it need uh, more more training because it was one day about uh, thoracic and lumbar block. And uh, I hope uh, Dr. Saad uh, make a virtual one, even to prepare for that to make a virtual, and we can okay. we have the media. We can do that. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. Great. Great. So as there is no more training, I would like to hand over to Dr. Saad to take it from there.